Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. Uh, today's video is another instructional video and it's uh, from a request I got from someone a while back asking me to uh, show a video about how to overhaul a Canon 7 rangefinder camera. Uh, it just so happens I got this uh, old Canon 7 uh, in the mail the other day and uh, quite obviously it, it's a black paint model though uh, eh. It's uh, seen a lot of use, and much of the black paint has worn off, but uh, yeah, this is going to be the one that I'm going to be uh, working on today. So uh, when I get one of these cameras, before I do any work to it, I will uh, take a quick look at it and see uh, if it needs anything obvious. So uh, the first thing to do is uh, check the light meter, and the light meter on this one, it's working in the, I guess, H position, but uh, in the normal position, it, it doesn't seem to be working. Uh, sometimes uh, the faulty light meter in a Canon 7 isn't actually a problem with the light meter itself. It can be a connection or it can be somewhere in the switch here. Uh, the contact inside the switch uh, sometimes gets dirty or corroded and it will cause the meter not to work. Uh, but luckily, uh, cleaning it is not a big deal. Alright, the uh, next thing I'll do is um, uh, dial seems to work okay, frame line selector is okay. Alright, shutter seems to work and it seems reasonably accurate at uh, uh, half a second. Uh, there's some minor dings on this camera but uh, nothing in the way of big dents. It's uh, a pretty interesting, you know, I guess in fairly decent shape other than the paint. Take a look at the shutter curtains. Shutter curtains on these cameras generally have uh, dents. Uh, this one's got some very minor dents on this shutter and a very slight dent on the other sh shutter. A little bit of oil on the uh, shutter curtain. That doesn't really make any difference. And the lens, this one has a uh, 50 millimeter f1.8 lens. Uh, it's got a lot of cleaning marks and rub marks on it, and probably isn't really any good. And it looks like it's kind of hazy on the inside too. It's really hard to find a good Canon 50 millimeter f1.8 lens. I've got another lens on the way for this camera. It's a 50 millimeter f2.2, which is kind of a, a rare uh, Canon 50 millimeter lens. They were only sold in Japan and were uh, optional on the Canon P and Canon 7 and uh, even you know they were only sold here but they're not even that common here I only come across one once in a while so that should arrive tomorrow and uh, since it's a black lens it should look much better on this camera so uh, anyway uh, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, get started so uh, I'll be right back all right so uh, we're going to need a few tools here <clears throat> to do the job. Uh, the Canon 7 is actually a little, little, a little bit less difficult to work on than the Canon P. There are fewer things to have to remove, but um, there are still a, a few tricky things you have to be careful with when you're working on one of these cameras. Uh, we just need some basic tools. We need, uh, once again, a pointed spanner wrench. Uh, this is a specialized tool where you can use a pair of tweezers with sharp points or you can file down a pair of needle nose pliers uh, to, to give it sharp points. Uh, you'll need uh, a very small slotted screwdriver. This is a 1.1 millimeter JIS screwdriver. You can get a really small one from uh, Amazon or whatever, it works quite well. And then a couple of larger slotted screwdrivers. Alright, so uh, let's go ahead and get started and I'll be back in just a second. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is take off the film winding and uh, shutter charging lever. So. Uh, this one is a little odd. It doesn't have the proper screw on the top. Uh, normally you would use um, your pointed spanner and remove the screw which holds on the lever. This one has a something I haven't seen before actually, but it fits properly and it has the proper washers and spacers. So I'm not sure what's up with this, but uh, anyway, interesting. So long as it works, I guess. So uh, you take off the nut, uh, there will be a, a spacer underneath, a compression washer underneath that, 
And there's a spacer here which uh, sometimes stays on the camera, sometimes comes off with uh, the lever. In this case it came off with the lever so I'll just leave it on there. Alright, next thing we have to do is we have to take off the shutter speed dial. So this is the, the one tricky part about this job and you have to be quite careful uh, how you go about it. So what you need to do to take it off is you need to first uh, set the film speed to uh, ISO 400 or a, a DIN 27 on the other side and then you need to set the shutter speed to uh, uh, 1 15th of a second and then uh, keep a lookout on the dial here at 1 15th of a second you should show the the red aperture scale in the light meter and f2.8 should be at the bottom so this one here is actually a little bit low so someone's had this apart before and put it on didn't quite get it back right the f2.8 should be a little bit higher uh, just about where that little black line is a small black line on the top of the light meter the reason you have to set the uh, film speed to ISO 400 and the shutter speed to uh, 15th of a second is so the screw holes line up. There are three set screws which uh, hold this assembly together and they must be loosened to remove uh, the, the shutter speed dial. If it isn't set this way the holes on the inside are not going to line up with the holes on the shutter speed dial and you won't be able to take them out with your screwdriver. So it's an important step. Okay. I just back them out maybe uh, two or three turns. I don't want to take them out all the way because uh, the set screws are small and easily lost. And also, if I take them out all the way, the uh, film speed indicator ring on the bottom sometimes comes out of the shutter speed dial and I don't want it to come out. I want it to come off in a single unit if I can. Like so. I want it to come out as a single unit because if it comes out in a couple of pieces the dial is just glued into place and if I pull it off then I've got to figure out, I've got to line it back up and glue it back on. So it should come out in one single piece uh, like so. And under here there's a gear and if I turn this you can see the uh, maybe you can see the aperture number is turning here so to, I would just turn this a little bit more up like that and that would put the uh, uh, that would line up the meter uh, to the more correct position all right so uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the film rewind knob And this is easier than the Canon P. The Canon P you have to remove a screw from the fork on the Canon 7. They did away with that. So you simply just take it off like so. Alright, the next thing to do is remove the uh, release dial which goes around the shutter button. And this is held on a, with three screws. What I want to do is I want to turn it to where I can access all all three screws. If it's turned all the way to that position I can't get uh, to one of the screws. So there's a white mark here just past the A. I'll, I'll set it to that. These cameras are not always the same. Uh, there, are, there were subtle changes during the production runs of these cameras and this is one part where uh, there was some change over the years. So sometimes you don't have to, you, these three screws will line up if it's set at the A, whereas this one won't, so I have to turn it back to the, the next spot. And once again, uh, take these out, but not all the way out, just loosen them up. And as you can see under here, there's a small, you know, a brass washer and this one's nice and stuck in place so I don't have to worry about losing it. Uh, if the brass washer comes off and gets lost and you put this back on and you tighten down the set screws uh, the dial may lock and not turn and you won't be able to operate it correctly so uh, always be careful not to lose the washer which is located in this spot. Next thing we have to do is remove the flash socket using the pointed tool 
quite easy to do on this camera, the Canon 7S, which uh, replaced the Canon 7, uh, had, did it, they, they used a different socket on here, which doesn't have the access holes where you can attach the tool, so it's kind of difficult to get out. But the, the Canon 7 is like the Canon P, quite easy to remove. You know, the original black paint Canon 7 cameras are quite hard to find. Um, they're very rare, and I think, you know, this is, over the last 10 years, this is the third one which I've had. You can always spot the original black paint ones by the lugs for the uh, uh, neck strap. They are always black. A lot of these cameras have been repainted, and they come with uh, chrome-plated lugs, and uh, and kind of, you know, usually not a very good job to, you know, with the repainting. Some people do a fairly good job with it, but if it doesn't have the black lugs, then it's not the correct. All right, so uh, that's pretty much everything taken off. The only the last thing I took out was the little screw on the side here. Oh, and one more thing that you, you have to remove is this access cover for the uh, horizontal adjustment on the rangefinder. That also has to come out. Okay, and then the cover should lift right off. Okay, so uh, one thing that you always have to do on these and that, uh, that Canon made a lot of use of in these cameras was putting these rubber foam seals in different places under the top cover or in the uh, body shell cover. And uh, these seals tend to get uh, dry rotted and get dust all over the inside of the camera so uh, you the first thing you have to do is uh, remove these I've got a waste basket under my desk here so let me scrape this off okay so I've removed the seal material and what I'll do now is I'll put a, I'll clean off any residue on the bottom. I put a little bit of a lacquer thinner on a cotton swab and wipe around on the inside. Okay. And also, uh, the rubber seal material is on the bottom of the. Uh, viewfinder window, so I'll scrape that off into my waste basket again. Okay, so we have the top cover off and I'll describe the different things we have under here. Here's the, of course, the light meter mechanism and the indicator needle. Uh, right here we have the selector for the different frame lines. When you turn the dial, it turns this cam, which uh, pushes this linkage and shifts uh, a mask here. There are two masks, one in front of the other. And as the mask moves, it exposes uh, one new set of frame lines and hides the old ones. One thing you have to look out for in these cameras is the masks, uh, the, the black paint inside deteriorates and can allow lights to go you know, through. So you'll see like spots and splotches or whatever. Uh, replacing these things is kind of difficult. Uh, what you can do to get rid of the splotches is with a magnifying glass and a very tiny uh, paintbrush. You can look on the front here and uh, shine a light through the back, uh, through the uh, uh, viewfinder and you can kind of see any spots and you can just touch up with paint on the front glass here you don't have to remove this and try to redo the paint on the back and you can usually clean these up quite a bit and make them a lot more easy to use uh, i mentioned before about the contact uh, which can make the meter not work properly uh, here is the contact here and Let's see. What I'll do is use a little bit of uh, lighter fluid, clean that off a little bit. And also another thing to take a look at is uh, the switch here inside the top cover. Uh, this is quite dirty. 
I'm not sure if this will do the job when it comes to uh, getting the light meter working again. I hope so. Uh, if not, I've got other light meter cells around here somewhere. I can just swap one in. Okay. Well, hopefully that'll work. All right. So what we want to do now is uh, clean out the optics of the viewfinder and rangefinder and adjust it. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I will remove this. There's a dust cover right here on this front uh, block of glass and it's just glued into place. So I'll slide a, a screwdriver under here and kind of pry it up. Uh, this one's been cleaned sometime in the past because someone glued it back on using you know, 10 times as much glue as they should have used. And I want to remove this because if I remove the dust cover then I can clean uh, the insides of the front uh, block and the rear block and also the side. If I leave the cover on I can't reach any of this stuff. And I also want to uh, clean out this little eyepiece on the back. So take off this little screw. This is one of the screws which is really easy to use, lose, so be careful where you put it. Yeah, probably like within the last 15 or 20 years this has been worked on. It's not so dirty. I'll blow out the dust. All right, and so it's very difficult to fit a cotton swab in here to clean in between the elements so what I do is I squeeze them flat with a pair of uh, pliers. These pliers I only use for this for this particular job that way I don't get any uh, metal shavings or stuff on the cotton swabs which might scratch the glass. Yeah, there's no fungus in here, just a little bit of uh, dust and haze. And I can get it to fit tighter by twisting it sideways a little bit. All right, and take a look here. All right, that's very clean. And I want it to clean in the back here. Okay. Alright, that's nice and clean. clean uh, the eyepiece here. As I've mentioned before in my other videos, I use the ceiling light behind me and I angle the glass surfaces I'm cleaning so the ceiling lamp reflects off of them and this makes it easy to see if I've left any marks or haze or dust on them. and put this back into place and it's one of those uh, difficult screws which is in a troublesome place it's right next to the edge here next to an opening and if I'm not careful it likes to fall inside and then I've got to jiggle the camera around to get it to come back out all right so that part is clean Next thing I'll do is I'll clean the front of the frame line mask very, very gently. This will make the frame lines a little bit brighter and clearer and improve things in the viewfinder. I'll clean this side of the 
optics block on the viewfinder. The split image projects from the mirror across here, this air gap, and into the side of the prism here. Uh, the mirror here is very clean, but I'll clean it just a little bit more. You don't want to rub too much on these mirrors. Uh, if they go bad, I I have an old uh, TLR mirror which I cut into pieces over time, and I use the pieces to make new uh, beam splitting or rangefinder mirrors. All right, uh, that's clean. So next thing I want to do is replace this dust cover. You can see the hole there. That's what what. what the shape of the rangefinder patch. This isn't as precise as, as a, a Leica M, but it's, it's plenty adequate. Just a little bit of glue. Make sure that looks flat. Slide it down into place. Turn this so the f2.8 is lined up properly. Everything else looks okay in here. The outside of the camera shows a lot of wear, but the inside of the camera does not. So, uh, quite interesting. Alright, so let's go ahead and put the top cover back on. One thing I was careful to avoid touching was this cam for the uh, frame lines. I don't want to touch that because uh, it has to engage this pin on the inside underneath the dial for the, the frame line selector. If these are out of, out of alignment it's kind of difficult to put the cover back on. You have to kind of uh, uh, play around with it. Uh, one last thing. I clean the inside of this viewfinder piece. I won't put any more foam material to replace what I moved out because it doesn't really make any difference. Uh, you know, when I put the foam, in it, it doesn't actually seal anything. The dirt still gets in, so I figure I might as well uh, avoid getting any of the dust and future problems by just leaving it out. Okay, and the first thing I do is I turn the cam to make sure that the frame, si frame line selector is working, and it is. Just a quick look through there, focusing at my computer monitor on the other side of the camera, and it's already uh, much better than it was when I started. Alright, so uh, I'll go ahead and put in uh, the flash socket first. We need to get a new one of these tools. I just can't find this particular model anymore. I have to hunt around. I think it's a place in Akihabara still has them. I have to get on the drive out to Akihabara and find a place to park and go hunting around. All right, the original screw, black screw. It's worn a little silver on the front. All right, and I'll slide, turn this back on. Try to put it back on, there it goes. Okay, and then the release lever, line it up with the white dot. Tighten the set screws. sure once again that I have this f2.8 lined up with the black mark there it is and then the last tricky part is putting the shutter speed dial back in okay All right, so far so good
never over tighten any of these. I try to make it easy for the next person who ever has to work on the camera. Actually, the compression washer should go on the inside. And the square washer. And then this really odd screw. All right, so uh, that's it. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is I'll show you how to adjust the range finder on the camera. That's why I've left the, the front access cover off. So uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, what I need to do to uh, adjust that, I need uh, one tool. I need this small slotted screwdriver and I need to have a lens affixed to the camera and I have to have a, a landmark somewhere off in the distance where I can adjust the a range finder. Uh, luckily, Tokyo Tower is about, uh, about a kilometer away from here and my window here uh, faces toward Tokyo Tower and it's a great place for me to adjust the viewfinder and rangefinder on a camera. So I'm going to go ahead and take a quick look and see how it is. Okay, it's just a little bit off. Okay, slight turn there. Okay, needs a slight more turn. And ever so slight more turn. Find the slot. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, the vertical adjustment on this camera is fine, which is a wonderful thing, because uh, the vertical adjustment on the Canon 7 rangefinder is a total pain uh, to adjust. Uh, the first thing you have to do is you have to remove this uh, cap screw next to the shutter speed dial. And as it's located very close to the shutter speed dial, it's a little bit difficult to get a tool in there. I'm going to go ahead and go through the process just to show you how it's done. What is difficult about this system, or this, the way it's arranged, is that uh, the screw that you have to turn to adjust the vertical adjustment isn't directly below. It's kind of off to an angle. And you have to move the screwdriver somewhat at an angle like this, slightly to the rearward, to find the screw. You can't just put this uh, screwdriver straight in. Right underneath here, there's a, a, a metal lever. So you have to go behind the metal lever and the screw is there. So you can probably see the, the slight angle that I'm holding the screwdriver at in order to, uh, to reach this screw. Uh, and you really have to be careful. Only make tiny adjustments on this because it's quite easy to go a little bit too far and then you gotta go back and forth and play with it until you get the alignment just right. Uh, I'm very happy that I don't have to adjust this. Uh, this is the first Canon 7 I've had in uh, quite a while where I haven't had to adjust the vertical adjustment. So I, I'm, I'm very pleased that I don't have to mess with that. Okay. All right. 
so uh, uh, that's it for the the first major part uh, cleaning and adjusting the viewfinder and rangefinder the next thing we're going to do is uh, uh, clean the slow speed escapement so the slow speeds are more accurate take a break for a moment and then I'll be right back Alrighty, uh, this will be the last uh, step in the video and this is going to be uh, cleaning the slow speed escapement in the camera. A common problem with the uh, Canon 7 and Canon P cameras is that the slow speed mechanism uh, gets stuck or becomes slower than it should be. Uh, this is caused by uh, dust and debris getting into the slow speed escapement, uh, mainly from the rubber seals which go around the shell which surrounds the camera body. So, uh, this isn't uh, too difficult of a job, but you do have to be a little bit uh, careful. Uh, you only need a couple of uh, tools here. You need the normal slotted screwdrivers and you'll need uh, the pointed spanners once again. So the first thing to do is to remove the lens. And yeah, this lens is heavy. This is one of the old, the chrome plated lenses are made of solid brass, and which is uh, thickly chrome plated. And, and they're quite heavy. They weigh uh, maybe a third more than the later lenses, which are made of aluminum. And uh, the later ones, I think, are a little bit more scratch resistant than the earlier ones. But um, you know, unfortunately, the later ones are more prone to haze. So anyway, we'll go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're going to do is remove uh, the self timer lever using the pointed spanner. Oop. As I complained about in the previous video, I need to get a new uh, pointed spanner, but this is the only kind which I really like, and uh, the place where I got it no longer carries them, and I think the only other place I can find one is out at like maybe Yodobashi Camera out in Akihabara, which isn't so close to here, but uh, I'm going to have to go out and uh, take a trip. Uh, when I pull off this lever, uh, the self-timer will wind down a little bit. That's normal. Don't worry about it. I need a screwdriver with a small tip to remove these three screws, which hold on the snout. And I take that off like so. And then the next thing I need to do is remove the uh, lens mounting flange. And for that, I use a, a, a really good quality screwdriver because I don't want to damage the screws and I want to make sure that I get them properly tight. So, uh, there are four screws. Uh, two are long and two are short. The short ones go on the bottom, the long ones go on the top. I did this repair in my Canon P repair video uh, some time back. The steps are basically the same. Uh, there is a little bit of a difference between the Canon P and the Canon 7. The Canon 7 has this convenient little red dot on the top that lets you know how to put it back on, whereas the Canon P does not. And you might put it on the wrong way. And yes, it is possible to put it on the wrong way. Okay, uh, the next thing you have to do is lift off the flange, and I must do this very, very carefully because there are uh, shims underneath, and I don't want to damage or distort the shims. As you can see, there are uh, shims on either side. And what I'll do is I'll make sure I'll put them so that they're oriented the same way they were when they were on the camera. And there are two screws which go under the lens flange which have to come out. And then next I have to remove uh, the four screws which hold on the body shell. These have black paint on the tip, so and they're quite long compared to the other screws, so they're really hard to uh, put them in the wrong place. Okay, and then the body shell is ready to remove. Uh, what I do is I open the film door and lift the shell right off. And this exposes the self-timer. Uh, there's an intermediary shaft here, uh, which I will remove so it doesn't fall off later on. And here is the uh, uh, slow speed escapement. So what I want to do is uh, first 
I make sure that uh, there's no rubber foam on the bottom. This is where uh, the dust comes, uh, which uh, causes, contaminates the slow speed escapement and causes it to stick. Uh, brush it off. This has already been cleaned off. This, is, this isn't the first time the camera's been apart. Someone came through and did this some time back. Go ahead and see how it works. Okay, no problems. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put it back together. If it were sticky or not running, I would just add a few drops of lighter fluid and let it seep in. And usually, uh, pretty much every time I've ever done this, if I put a drop of lighter fluid in the shutter speed is stuck, it starts working again. So uh, that's pretty much all you have to do to free it up. And uh, sometimes if it's persistent, I'll let it uh, sit open like this till it dries off and make sure that it still works after the uh, fluid is dried up. So let's go ahead and put it back together. Go ahead and drop the cover back on the front and close the door and latch it. Uh, then I will take uh, the two screws which go under the flange. and tighten them up. I'll just seat them at first. I don't tighten any, anything until I have all the screws in. When I was in uh, high school I took the auto shop class which was a lot of fun for me and that's where I learned the basics of uh, uh, mechanics and fixing things. It was a fun class. I was lucky in my first year because my classmates the, on my team, we were divided into teams and each team was given an old Oldsmobile Rocket 88 V8 engine to rebuild. These engines had been rebuilt time and time again over the decades. And my foreign exchange student buddies who were on my team were almost never in this class. So I got to do all the work myself, which is something I actually enjoyed. Okay, once these are seated in, I'll go ahead and tighten them in kind of a criss-cross pattern. Okay, and I want to put the shims back on in the space they'll go. Uh, sometimes I'll wet it a little bit with just a little bit of saliva and that helps keep them from wandering around. That'll kind of stick them into place a little bit. These have to go on exactly the way they came off, otherwise the lens flange won't be exactly perpendicular to the film plane. You would probably never notice it if you made a mistake, but uh, uh, it would make some difference. Alright, and I don't want those to move, so I'll place this on very, very carefully with the red mark pointed up. The Canon P is there is no red mark. You have to be very careful how you take it off so you remember how it goes back on because uh, the shims, it can be thicker on one side and thinner on the other or on the top or bottom. And if you don't put them on the way it came off, uh, it's not going to be set up right. All right, uh, as I said, the two longer screws go on the top of the lens flange. I'll go ahead and put in the screws. I'm not going to snug them down yet. I'm just starting them. Like so. And you want to be careful here. I put my finger around the tip so I don't drop the screwdriver into the chamber in the front. I don't want the screwdriver hitting the shutter curtains. On cloth curtain it wouldn't make any difference, but these uh, stainless steel cart curtains, even though they're very durable to, and you, know, you can dent them or whatever, uh, they are easily cut and I don't want to cut them. Okay, and the last thing to do is uh, install the snout over the self timer. First I'm going to put in the uh, intermediary shaft and underneath here I can see like a small compression washer that's another thing you have to be careful not to lose. If you lose it and you put it back together, 
uh, the snout won't come out far enough to engage the self timer lever and you won't be able to install it properly. So I'll go ahead and drop that in. Then I'll drop this back on the top here. Oh, it decided to come out as well. It's okay. Okay. And the two countersunk screws go on the top. The machine screw with the protruding head goes on the bottom. That's what the self-timer lever will catch against when it reaches the end of its travel. I'll just go ahead and start these and then seat them in and get them tight. Uh, another word of caution, don't use the self-timers on these cameras. They're not reliable. Uh, these are uh, pretty much, uh, they're supposed to be better than the ones which come in the leaf shutter cameras, but uh, in my experience they aren't. So uh, it's better to be safe than sorry. I don't know anyone who really uses the self-timers on these things, so I don't recommend using it. I don't use it, and I recommend you don't use them either. If I just put this, uh, so the lever arm right now, it will just kind of sit at a funny angle like this. I, it has to go completely vertical. And to do that you have to wind the self timer back a certain dif dif distance and as it's turning you have to quickly put it on on the right spot and uh, the, it should stop at the top. So what I'll do is, so what I want to do, so it's pointed at like right here right now, what I want to do is this is where the self timer should be uh, at this angle. So what I want to do is turn it up something until it's like that. And then quickly pull it off like that. Oh, I missed it. All right, I have to do it again. Okay, I got it that time. And that will be the last time I ever use this self timer. If you have to have a self timer on one of these old cameras, just get an old one which you attach to the uh, shutter release button, uh, walls or something like that. They're easy to find and they're really cheap. Okay. Alright, and we'll put the lens back on. And this lens will go in the can tomorrow. There's not much I can do with it, but uh, the new lens will be coming so it'll be good to go. All right, anyway, that, that's it. Uh, everything seems to work on it. Couldn't quite get the light mirror to work uh, in, the re in the regular mode, though it is working in the high mode. I don't worry about that too much. I don't really use the built-in light meters on these cameras anyway. Uh, the viewfinder, rangefinder has been cleaned and adjusted. Everything is nice and neat. Uh, the last thing I would do would be to uh, uh, replace the light seals because the Canon 7 does require light seals, the Canon P does not. So that'll be the next step on this. Uh, anyway, uh, this camera I'll be listing in my uh, online store, my eBay store, and my Etsy store uh, tomorrow after the lens arrives. So if you want a really nice and very rare uh, black paint Canon 7 rangefinder camera. Uh, please check back in a couple of days. It should be listed for sale along with a few other things. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing another vintage Japanese camera, uh, please check the links to my stores below the in the description below the video. And if you want to see more uh, videos about vintage Japanese cameras and photography in Japan, uh, please subscribe. I'll be posting more videos shortly. Thank you very much for watching and uh, I hope you tune in again soon.